Hey, it's Chris here. Uh, got a new video for you guys today. Uh, we have a Blackberry, I think it's a Blackberry Classic. Uh, this one uh, stopped booting, it will just go to a black screen and uh, it just won't go anywhere. So, um, the only solution for this phone was to actually remove the, uh, uh, the chip and uh, do a chip off. So, uh, we got a new machine now. We have uh, IR6500 BGA Rework Station. So, we've already tested it on different boards. Uh, it actually does a very good job. Uh, it doesn't have any light. It's not visible light, it's infrared. Uh, so we did a bunch of these boards already. Uh, it's, uh, the machine is very powerful. It's way better than what we used to use. Uh, anyways, uh, let's prep the board and let's put it in the machine and uh, start the recovery. So what's really good about the station is uh, the thermocoupler. Uh, this can go directly by the chip and then we can get um, proper uh, temperature readings. The, there's a bottom plate that we can set a uh, certain temperature there's and then there's the the top portion that we can actually control the uh, uh, top uh, heating element and this one's really good you can actually set up different uh, different steps each step how long it takes to get to that step and what temperature it should be at so um, you can gradually increase the temp and not shock the chip and damage it uh, so far anytime we've used this mach machine on any chip uh, we got a hundred percent success rate which is really good um, so the risk of damaging a chip goes down drastically, which is which is a great thing. The first thing we're gonna set is the uh, the bottom plate. Uh, I like to keep it about a 110, 112. Um, we're gonna start that, and the next step uh, we're gonna start the uh, the top element, and that's already set up. The curves are set up, so we're just gonna hit start, and uh, it's gonna go straight to stage one, and the temperature is gonna start increasing slowly. So. Uh, this is the best shot I can get off the actual board uh, because the uh, heating element is very close to the board so you can see the uh, flux is starting to melt here and uh, the first thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to remove um, um, the underfill on the edge here I'm also trying the CPU see if it's moving it but uh, uh, but first things first is to remove all that underfill. I want to have a clear path um, to go with my tool right underneath the uh, the NAND chip. So I'm just kind of clearing all the areas here, slowly removing all the um, uh, components and then underfill that's blocking uh, my way into the chip. Yeah, I think at this point we are reaching stage four. Um, so the chip was starting to get um, uh, desoldered from the bottom, so I'm just removing all the other components. Um, I'm just testing uh, if, I, if I can go underneath. Uh, I don't want to force it because, you know, forcing, forcing the removal might actually damage the chip. Um, so I'm just, just, just checking the underfill, see if it's, if it's flexible enough. And just around this spot, I noticed the, uh, my tool was actually sliding underneath of the chip. So I'm very slowly and meticulously, um, um, not trying to pry it, but, but just kind of separate it. And here's the chip lifted. And there's the chip, lots of underfill still on it, but overall it was a good lift. So we're gonna stop the machine now and we're gonna go over uh, to our soldering station and we're gonna start cleaning it. Which is going to lower the temperature here. So here's the chip. Um, it's pretty good. I'm not going to film um, the actual cleaning process because we've already done this in multiple videos. So um, I'm going to skip that. Uh, if, if you want to see how we do it, you can click here on the left. Uh, there'll be a link to um, to another video that uh, showcases how to clean these chips. So here's the chip after cleaning. Um, we are able to remove the underfill fairly well. Um, so next step, we're going to take it over to our uh, Linux machine and we're going to use DD Rescue to dump the chip. So here we are uh, with the chip. Chip is already in the cradle. This is a EMMC 12 by 16. So we're just going to plug it in here. And go over to Linux station and start uh, recovering. As soon as the drive is plugged in, um, we're going to see it here in a syslog. Uh, it's going to show the, um, the device name and the size. So there it is. Um, so the next, uh, next step would be to run DD Rescue. 
Um, you can use any other imaging tool of your choice, FTK Imager or whatever. Uh, but there's the, the imaging starting now. And I think this took about 15 minutes. It's it's not really a long process because because it's a fairly small uh, NAND chip, so um, it goes by pretty quickly. And uh, here we are at 100%. Okay, it's finished. So, um, no errors, which is great. I mean, if there were any errors, we would most likely use a v uh, visual non reconstructor to, to skip the past the errors. Uh, well, let me just check the size here. Yep, there's the, the, the image. Uh, so, next, uh, we're going to move it over to our UFET station, uh, celebrate UFET, and we're going to start the uh, parsing process of recovering the data. And uh, here's the last uh, step of, um, of this recovery. We're going to select Black Project as usual. Uh, we know this is a Q20, which is the uh, BlackBerry Classic Qnix um, physical extraction. And we already have the image copied from our Linux machine. Uh, we're going to select it. And uh, we're going to cl click Finish and start the uh, parsing process. Uh, this took about, I think, about 20 minutes or so. Um, it's obviously sped up here. Uh, we get quite a bit of data from this phone, um, quite a bit of deleted, uh, as you can see on the on the right side of the screen. Um, just scroll through and check if everything's okay. Yeah, it look, look, looks okay here. Uh, we're gonna close the um, uh, the trace window in a second in the bottom. Yeah, so all that stuff in red, all the um, different sections in red, is the uh, data that was deleted and was also recovered so uh, overall this is a pretty good recovery we can also look at the raw file system um, by hand we can look at each individual um, directory structure so um, all in all it's a good recovery anyways uh, thank you for watching uh, if you'd like to see more of our videos please subscribe uh, and uh, we'll see you in the next video